The U.S. Supreme Court will decide once and for all if same-sex couples nationwide have a right to marry under the Constitution. Coming up, hear what people on both sides of the issue have to say. Plus, the search for two Kentucky teenagers is starting to gain national attention. We'll tell you where they were last spotted. We see her in the vehicle with smoke coming in the cab and her pretty much, you know, pretty much screaming, get me out of here. Two men pulled a woman from a burning truck this morning on I-64. You'll hear from one of those heroes next. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening. A Frankfurt woman says she is lucky to be alive. Her truck skid on a patch of ice, causing it to roll over multiple times, and then it caught fire. This is what is left of the truck. The Franklin County Sheriff tells us the woman was trapped inside when it caught fire. But as Victor Puente tells us, thanks to some quick thinking and a couple of good Samaritans, the woman made it out alive. He has our top story at 11. This picture of Emily Seaman's truck was taken moments after two men pulled her out of it. She was trapped in her truck. Uh, the, the vehicle was on fire. The sheriff says she was driving east on I-64 around 7 a.m. when she lost control of her truck and went off the road, flipping several times and coming to a stop near the 50-mile marker. Just a, a little bit of a freezing mist. And I think that was just enough to get our overpass as slick this morning. One of the men who helped pull Siemens from her burning truck told me that when he stopped, there was already an older couple standing on the side of the road. And at first, he thought they had been the ones inside that truck. They're actually informing me that, you know, that someone inside the, the vehicle. She was, she was very panicked. And uh, I could tell right away, you know, that, that she was. You know, we, we just had to get her out. So Banta, who's from Shelby County, and a man from Indiana, Sam Harping, worked to get her out. Banta told me the door was jammed, so while one of the men covered her face, the other retrieved a hammer and shattered her window. I think the thing that sticks with me most is to see her in the vehicle with smoke coming in the cab and her pretty much, you know, pretty much screaming, get me out of here. Firefighters put out the flames and paramedics tended to Siemens. Despite everything he did, Banta still giving other people credit. Kudos to those guys as well, because they did a fantastic job. Siemens was taken to Frankfurt Regional for treatment. She told me she didn't want to go on camera, but did want to thank everyone who came to her rescue. They're heroes. They saved her life. Uh, there's no doubt. My hope is that, uh, you know, that someone would do the same for me and my family if we were in the same situation. In Franklin County, Victor Puente, WKYT. And good for those men and that woman. Siemens was released from the hospital and is now home recovering. A routine drive to work changed in a second for a Lincoln County police officer. Investigators say Officer Travis Richardson hit a man walking along Highway 150 near Crab Orchard last night. Police say that 69 year old Howard Robert Robbins was trying to cross the road when Richardson hit him. Officer Richardson tried to help Robbins on the scene, but he died later at the hospital. I seen his hat laying upside down in the road, and I know it was him, and it just broke my heart because he was so good of a friend of mine. We are told the officer is on administrative leave while the accident is being investigated. An elementary school student is still recovering tonight after he was dragged by a school bus earlier this week in Clark County. The young boy suffered a fractured wrist and broken pelvis. Investigators are still trying to figure out exactly what happened. A daycare worker who helped the boy get off the bus says she thinks the boy's jacket somehow got caught as the bus driver pulled away. And tonight we're hearing the 911 call from a witness who was right behind the bus. I'm on, I don't know where I'm at. A bus just ran over a kid. The kid's trapped. Y'all got to get somebody here. It's a little kid, guys. The child is not trapped. But it has been struck by the bus, correct? Yeah, it rolled right over top of it. Okay. The Clark County Sheriff's report says the bus driver, Tammy Howard, was distracted and not paying attention when the incident happened. Police are calling it a dangerous game. They say a Lexington driver put other people in danger. Dominique Blackford is accused of driving into oncoming traffic on 7th Street at nearly 80 miles an hour. They say he was playing chicken with some cars, but police say his game almost led to a head-on collision with a police cruiser. Blacksford is charged with wanton endangerment, not wearing a seatbelt, and violation of a permit. We have an update tonight about two Kentucky teenagers police believe are on a cross-country crime spree. Witnesses say the teenagers were last spotted in Florida tonight. Earlier, they were seen in Georgia. Investigators have been trying to track down 13-year-old Cheyenne Phillips and 18-year-old Dalton Hayes since January 3rd. That's when Cheyenne's father first reported her missing. Since then, they've been on the run. Cheyenne's mother says she just wants her daughter back home. 
I'm just afraid that he's going to wind up getting her hurt. I'm sorry. It's just hard. It's really hard. The simple fact knowing that my daughter's out here in this world. Police in Georgia believe the couple was staying in camps or homeless shelters. They're asking anyone who spots the teenagers to call police. We finally had some relief from this wintry weather we've been dealing with the last couple of weeks, and now we're looking forward to a big warm up, at least for tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey's tracking that spike in temperatures. Chris, I am loving this. Yeah, a lot of folks are echoing these uh, same sentiments, Sam, across central and eastern Kentucky. Today was very nice. Tomorrow, is going to be even better. Let's get you caught up on exactly where we are now as we wrap up that Friday evening. Maybe some folks just getting in. Big concert in Lexington a little earlier this evening, or maybe you're a late night owl. You're just getting started tonight. Upper 20s to low 30s across all of central and eastern Kentucky as of now. Gusty winds making it feel like it's into the low and mid 20s. Temperatures tonight not going to drop off as much as what we've seen for many nights so far in January. We'll put a halt on that with a gusty wind that will eventually. Come from the southwest. Defender, nothing going on as of now. Clean, clear skies across not only Kentucky, the Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley, and out to the west. Though a little bit of cloud cover showing up into parts of Iowa and Missouri. Those clouds are ahead of a cold front that scoots into town as we go into Sunday. That will change what we have coming for tomorrow. Now we're on the good side of that front tomorrow with temperatures heading toward the mid 50s into the afternoon. But Sam, Coming up in a bit, I'm going to track a cold front into town for your Sunday, and I'll show you how we may go from 50s to some snowflakes in less than 24 hours. That's just ahead. Thank you, Chris. A nationwide ruling on gay marriage may not be far away. This afternoon, the U.S. Supreme Court justices announced the high court will review an appeals court decision upholding same-sex marriage bans in four states. Kentucky is one of them. Tonight, new at 11, WKYT's Garrett Weimer talked to people on both sides of the issue. They may have different opinions on Kentucky's gay marriage ban, but on this they can agree. The opportunity now that the Supreme Court will get involved. It's not fair that somebody just across the uh, Ohio River in Illinois can have certain access to, uh, to government protection and to certain rights to, to simple equality, and people in Kentucky can't. We're a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, and that should be first. No judicial activism at this point. Kentucky Attorney General Jack Conway has also weighed in. And I strongly, strongly believe that um, the Supreme Court will say that the, the bans on same-sex marriage are unconstitutional. A statement from Governor Steve Bashir: Kentuckians and indeed all Americans deserve clarity and finality on this matter and the assurance that the law will be consistent across state lines. Another thing advocates and opponents have in common, confidence in their cause. I am optimistic that the current makeup of the court does lend itself to to actually recognizing the marriage equality. If constitutional law is followed, I'm tremendously optimistic. There is nothing in the U.S. Constitution about marriage, and that means the federal government does not have the power to regulate marriage. The states do. Now the stage is set for a Supreme Court showdown. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. The case will be argued in April. A decision from the U.S. Supreme Court is expected by late June. Kentucky is one of 14 states where same-sex couples cannot marry. Doctors say it's a great way to keep students and staff healthy. School leaders in Whitley County decided to call off school today because so many students were out sick. Doctors say calling off school is probably the best way to help slow down the spread of germs. That's a good idea. Let it rest. Let it die out for a while. Whitley schools are closed Monday for Martin Luther King Day. McCreary County schools were also closed today because of illness.